we end up, what, where are we going to end up? If the thoughts are mostly are about either past or the future, either what happened yesterday or what is going to happen tomorrow, if it's all about that, and then if that's been reduced, then where are we going to end up having our attention on? It's going to be in the present moment. It's going to be here now. We're going to be more present. We'll start enjoying the current time, whatever that we do, we get developed that focus towards current thing that we have in our hand. That's why meditators become very, very productive. They increase the focus because all the past is going away, right? past and future. So we bring ourselves into the present moment, all the energy associated with these thoughts. You know, every thought is energy. So if 80% thoughts have gone, negative thoughts have gone, and another 15% redundant thoughts are gone, redundant. Just out of nothing, you'll just think, Ah, oh, okay, so today well, our, our um, class is going to be just another boring class. Just redundant. You don't think too much about it. You just have traffic is going to be tough for me. This is for working people. But for you, it could be something else, right? Redundancy. So we remove the redundancy thought. So we end up putting so much, saving so much energy. Meditation is a process of conserving energy. It's a process of maximizing energy. Meditation helps to first conserve energy. Second, then it helps to then increase body energy because we are becoming the energy field. So reduce thought, we are conserving energy and we are bringing ourselves into the present moment because past and future, we'll start worrying about not thinking about, so you gotta be in the present moment, we are in the present moment. So we enjoy what we do. We become more productive in what we do. And then also all that energy that is conserved out of this you know, negative thought, otherwise it is just going waste. All that is conserved and then so now we have to put it somewhere, right? That energy is there, you've got to put it somewhere, then we start applying into the present, or by being in the present, we project it for the future. We project it onto those things which are essential for us. If admission is essential, that's where your focus will be. You'll stop worrying about what happened, what happened to 10 other students who did not get admission. Instead, you'll focus and say, that one student who got admission into that best university, so I can also be that. So you start focusing on what you want not what we don't want. Most of the time our attention is on what we don't want. Think about it. Since morning, how many times you put your attention on what you don't want? What did not work is what, not, does what we don't want. What works is what we want and then that's where you put it. So, so emptying a mind, bringing ourselves in the present moment, applying all that energy into the present moment as well as the present to the future. Because being in the present, we start dreaming. We start visualizing about the future. Perfect, beautiful. That's where we want to be. And the third thing that's going to happen in meditation is that when we empty ourselves fully, quantum physics, we are really empty inside. When we empty ourselves, all the thoughts, then we become one with that energy field. And when we do that, then we operate not as a limited body, not as this limited mind capacity. Instead, we operate as this whole unlimited person. Suddenly, we get this confidence. We get this thing that I am much bigger than this body. We, can, we start developing that uh, feeling. It's called operating as a whole. If you if we are complaining about how the institute is not working very well, now think of yourself, you becoming a principal for a given day in a week. You, know, you become the principal of the institute or the dean of the institute for a day. Then you understand everything that goes on. But the rest of the six days you are working, as a, you are uh, again become a graduating student. So now you understand how, how will it be? Next, when you talk about whether it's the professors, whether it is teachers, whether it's system or education, you already are exposed to the challenges, the limitations that are there at that level, that are there for your next set of people. So you understand a bigger picture. When you understand a big picture, then our, our, the way we work will be different, isn't it? Until then we're on this side, but the moment we're on the other side, we understand all of that too. Then so then our empathy increases quite a bit. So we start working differently. So that's what happens in meditation. When we become empty, then we operate as this whole field that whole, where everything is, we, we start seeing much, much bigger perspective. Basically, we, we see bigger perspective. When we see bigger perspective, then we stop worrying about things. We start complaining about things. Instead, we only are understanding and saying we have start becoming empathetic and then we operate differently. So there are three things that simply happen in meditation. Reduce thought, being in the present moment, applying the energy into the present as well as future, and then by being empty with this whole thing that is there, then we are operating as a much larger entity than what we are. Difference. It's just like you know, having a big picture exposed to us, even though we are in the current role. This simple breath mindfulness meditation, shall we go into that meditation once again? And the technique that we are practicing is breath anapanasati, observing our in-breath and out-breath. And 
we are doing heart elevation process in the beginning to fill up our heart with love, gratitude, compassion, any of the heightened emotions. We talked about heart elevation or the process of why we do it yesterday. So those of you missed, please do look at that uh, video. It is available on the Buddha CEO. If you're not become a uh, subscriber for that, so you should subscribe to that because you'll get to see because we keep loading every day new video, right? And you can go back and refer to that video about what is heart elevation, what is heart brain we talked about yesterday. So let's go into that uh, process once again. Relax yourself, sit comfortably. For the heart elevation, you follow my guidance very really actively. I'm gonna play music and keep your hands on your chest area with your eyes closed. We'll be recollecting an event which contains love, gratitude, compassion, adventure, any of those emotions, and then fill up your heart with that. Stay with it for over a few minutes. Then when I say, let's go into breath mindfulness meditation, that time is switch postures, put your fingers into fingers that time, Rest your hands comfortably in your lap with the eyes closed continuously and then observe the breath. Breath mindfulness meditation, which is the core part of meditation is about observing the breath. And as you observe the breath, mind becomes empty. When we observe the breath, our mind becomes empty. So the posture for breath mindfulness meditation is closing your eyes, remove the specks, fingers into fingers, rest your hands comfortably in your lap, cross your feet at ankle, and then observe the breath anywhere in the nose. When you observe natural breath, mind becomes empty. Slowly, slowly, as the mind becomes empty, we start finding emptiness inside everywhere all around. That is where we want to be for maximum time in that meditation. That's the primary thing for us, right? So breath mindfulness meditation are called anapanasati. That means to be with your in-breath and out-breath. And just to go into that meditation deeper, we are doing this heart elevation process where we are filling up our heart with love, gratitude for a few minutes and then go into the meditation. Relax yourself with your eyes closed. Wonderful. One more day of breath mindfulness meditation. And as we are practicing, it's got to get easier and better. We'll certainly take your questions for those of you who have questions and want to share from 6.30 for some time. But before that, today let's understand scientifically some more about the meditation process and what happens in our brain waves. And I wanted to introduce, we have about nine facilitators who have been helping. You know, if you, those of you who are members of these WhatsApp groups, there are nine facilitators who have been helping. And uh, quickly, let's learn from each of them, Bindu Madam, your group name, and then a minute about you and your meditation. Hello, friends. Uh, my name is Bindu from London, UK. Um, I've been meditating for one year, and since then, I've seen a great transformation in myself. and. Um, it, it's been an amazing journey. I'm the team facilitator for group uh, Jane Roberts and Richard Gerber. So I'd like to welcome you all and congratulate you all for being here today. It's a great transformation program and I love to see you as you embark on the uh, way to transformation. Welcome. Wonderful. Thank you, Vindu Madam. That's wonderful. Nimla Madam. Hello, everybody. Yeah. I'm audible, sir. Hope. Yes, yes, please go ahead. I'm Nidmala from Kakinada, at present staying in Hyderabad with my children. And uh, I'm the facilitator for Fami Rama group and uh, uh, Michael Singer. And I have been meditating from 10 years, 10 to 12 years. And a great transformation has taken place in my life. Uh, means uh, I have reduced my thoughts and I'm living in present. I'm healthy, I'm always joyful, and uh, I want, I always uh, dreamt about the youth uh, session because I wanted youth to have this uh, transformation at the earlier stage so that you all will feel better and the society will feel better and parents. Thank you for joining and I want you all to have consistency because in the group people have said, so many students have said that they are meditating but there's no consistency. Dear friends, let us have consistency, let us transform, and let us learn a lot of things. You are very lucky to be in this session. Thank you. You're welcome. Himashri, thank you, madam. Hello, everyone. Yeah. I'm Himashri. I'm studying in Manchester, UK, and I've, med I've been meditating for more than 10 years now. Uh, meditation has helped me in every aspect of my life, be it education or uh, just mental health or physical health and um, I'm the team facilitator for uh, Richard Bach and uh, Peter um, uh, 
roots. Rich leaves. Yeah, rich leaves. Thank you. Wonderful. You know, all of those names that you have. Thank you. All of the names that you have are the very popular authors of great books, right? So each one have your team facilitator should be sharing one or two book names about these authors that are very, very intriguing and then we can explore to understand the subject more. And all of you have access to this several PDFs and online uh, versions. So please do take those book names and explore. And then tomorrow or today, I think there's going to be a newsletter about covering the important books from some of these authors that you can uh, read through. Now let's come to this today's uh, subject at the same time. Let me invite uh, Naga Pradeep. Naga Pradeep is a software engineer, but otherwise is a brilliant master. He's been teaching meditation. He's been taking so much of subjects and classes around this running uh, a beautiful meditation center uh, called Soul Dance in um, Bangalore. So Nagapadeep is uh, going to be facilitating, co-facilitating. So the rest of the week for classes Nagapadeep is going to take. Nagapadeep, introduce also the teams you're running to parallelly and then go ahead. Hi friends, uh, my name is Pradeep. Uh, I'm facilitating for the groups Jodis Penza and uh, Lop Sangrampa. So very happy to be with you all here today. I, by profession, I'm working as a software engineer in Bangalore for the last uh, seven plus years. And I've been meditating for quite some time now, I think eight years. So we'll discuss some science today. So before getting into the topic, I would like to ask you a couple of questions or uh, would like to make you think about uh, these couple of scenarios, which I'm going to share with you right now. How many times are, have you ever been, uh, have you ever watched uh, some inspiring video in YouTube? For example, say the, uh, watch the video of uh, Virat Kohli talking about uh, how he stopped eating the junk food from 2014 and from then onwards his productivity increased and he became a better athlete and uh, better cricketer. So when I watched this, I, I, I felt very inspired and uh, I also thought, okay, uh, let me cut this portion of uh, the food which I am consuming uh, on a, uh, not a regular basis, one, once in a while and uh, let me go uh, athletic. And I followed it for a couple of days or maybe for a week and then uh, something happened, a friend invites for a party and or, uh, something, something and then I get back to the normal routine. I'm sure most of you can relate to that. One, one more uh, instance I can share. Like many of us would have read uh, these inspiring stories of uh, young entrepreneurs or successful entrepreneurs from the book, and uh, when they tell how they are uh, their success principles or how they are able to control the mind. For example, if you have read in the book that one, one of the entrepreneurs says that I'm I'm meditating, I'm taking one or two hours of my day every single day out of my busy schedule and uh, that's how I'm able to make my decisions so clearly and able to make the outcomes or close the deal so uh, appropriately. So when we read this we feel so inspired and then uh, we, 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 we take the decision okay let me also take this one or two hours of my day everything and put it aside and let me meditate and let me read and uh, let me spend on myself then we, we may do it for a couple of days or for a week or maximum for a month and then uh, something can happen after that. The weather is so nice, you don't want to come out of the blanket or uh, some good movie or IPL match could be coming at that point of time and then uh, the routine breaks and then back to the old habits. So have, have you ever thought why these things happen? You, many people take new year resolutions let, let me go to the gym this year completely and we enroll for the whole year. Remember, gym guys are very, uh, they know everything because they know that people will drop after one month. That's why they put offers on uh, yearly memberships, not on uh, monthly ones. So have you ever thought why this happens? We learn something, we want to implement that, but then uh, after a couple of weeks, we are back to our normal routine. When I, I was wondering why this is happening. So after I, I started reading some of the books and attended a couple of uh, sessions like this, I, I understood what actually is happening in the mind. What, what is the science behind uh, this? Why, 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 even though I'm consciously learning something, why my body is not cooperating with me? Let me share a slide with you. Okay, so if you, if you are seeing the slide, there are two images on the, the left side of the circle 
shows that there is something called the conscious mind and there is analytical mind and the subconscious mind again there are uh, some mathematical terms associated to that conscious mind 5% and then subconscious mind uh, 95% so let me explain uh, a bit about uh, these things whatever we are whenever we are learning something new so this is happening through the conscious mind so all the learning takes place through the conscious mind so conscious mind is the seat of the learning so the frontal part of the brain the neocortex is the one which is associated to that suppose when you read a book about that inspiring uh, when you read an inspiring story from that book or when you watch that motivational video from the youtube so from this conscious mind you are uh, learning and you are taking the decision okay let me implement this now now what is actually happening what is the subconscious mind uh, all about so subconscious mind is all about these habits and then the beliefs and uh, basically it's like a database so in, in, to tell in terms of uh, software language <clears throat> it is full of uh, data so to give a couple of uh, examples so when you start to the college from your home uh, do you drive so consciously that i have to take this turn this turn and again or uh, you start from your home and after 10 15 minutes you end up in your college so i think most of the times we'll will be thinking something but then we'll will be will be reaching to our destination right so how this is happening or another example so when you get up from your bed and we go to the uh, your bathroom and then start brushing do you consciously say that move the brush this way this way this way this way this way or just it happens unconsciously and after 5 minutes you you're done with your brushing <clears throat> it happens unconsciously right so why this is happening like that so since we have done this activity for thousands of times over a period of time maybe for years so this becomes part of the body memory because of this repetition this becomes part of the subconscious memory so all these habits the long term habits beliefs and then uh, so you are seeing the list of things over their skills emotional uh, reactions hardware behaviors conditional responses all are part of the subconscious mind so now when you are learning something consciously like i want to get up 6 am in the morning uh, with your conscious mind and uh, if your subconscious mind is also in in correlation with what you are learning from the conscious mind then it will it will be an easy task for you so let's assume that uh, you are in the habit of or i am in the habit of getting up 8 am or 9 am in the morning and i have taken a decision that from tomorrow onwards i want to get up uh, by 5:30 am or 6 am and i want to meditate for an hour so conscious mind is telling so 5% of the conscious mind is uh, motivating me come on get up get up but by 95% of my body memory which has been programmed for so many years is telling me to uh so okay we'll get up tomorrow let me sleep for some more time so who will win most of the times so when five people and 95 people are fighting together obviously 99% of the times 95 people will win so that is the reason this is the science behind why actually most of the times why even though consciously we want to do something subconsciously uh will be failing that so now let me explain why where meditation will come into the picture here how meditation will help us in breaking these uh, long term habits or these emotional uh, traumatic incidents or the attitudes or beliefs so before going into that let me explain you the right side of screen you are seeing an another circle right where you are seeing this uh, the waves and then the different uh, terms mentioned over there high beta beta alpha theta and then the delta so if you are seeing this high beta so there is a frequency mentioned over the 20 to 50 hertz and then the waves are uh, quite packed together that means it is the frequency is so high so basically these are all the various states of the brain so at any moment of time our brain can be in any of these states let me give an example of uh, each state high beta is a highly stressful state so if you see there are a lot of uh, thoughts going on in the mind that moment when you got into the examination hall and you got the question paper from the invigilator and uh, you have to answer maybe 5 out of 8 questions and uh, all the 8 questions are the alien questions so you have never seen them and uh, now the thoughts will come uh, start playing in, the, in our mind like what my what if i fail in the exam what what my professor will think what my friends will think what my parents will think how i am uh, this i have to clear this in order to be eligible for the placements so this moment we are getting into the mode of high highly stressful state so this is uh, in any any example you consider where you are thinking so much that is a highly stressful state or you are uh, in the cricket ground you are playing that final match where we are the last over you have to score so many runs and you are batting over there and what is going on in your mind are you so calm or so there are a lot of thoughts coming about what if i got get out what if i could not uh, pull it off uh, so all, all these states are the examples of the high beta states so if you come down below that there is another state called the beta so where the there are some thoughts going on in the mind but 
you are not in the stressful state the brain is still working but we are in the little relaxed state for example right now i am telling you something you are still processing in your mind <clears throat> but yeah you are relaxed if you see the next state called the alpha it is even more relaxed so the, we call it as a kind of uh, daydreaming state suppose you are sitting next to your pool or lake or the river side and you are just daydreaming about those beautiful moments which happened in the past or uh, you are visualizing about your future so the, this is the state uh, alpha and if you come next to that there is another state called the theta this is the state where your body is completely at rest but your mind is uh, working so body is at rest but mind is awake we call it as a subconscious state in order to pro- so uh, we were talking about uh, those habits and beliefs right so if you want to break any of those habit which is that self self sabotaging you or if you want to break down that particular belief so this is the state where you want to get access to once i am in access to the state of theta then i will be eligible to reprogram whatever there is in my mind so so meditation exactly helps you in order to lower your brain state suppose if you are in the high beta it helps you to get down slowly from the high beta to beta to alpha and then the theta and there are a couple of techniques like visualization and all where we use at that point of time and we will be able to reprogram uh, those beliefs so which we will be talking in detail in the coming sessions so the every day meditation what we are doing is uh, exactly helping us in order to, uh, to lower our brain waves the other day someone is asking i want to come out of the depression so all we need to do is to just work on this meditation once twice thrice every single day and lower our brain waves and that's it anything is possible through this all kinds of healings or <clears throat> breaking the beliefs patterns everything will happen automatically over there okay i'm uh, good for today if you have any questions then we can discuss on that wonderful so these brain waves that we re- we just saw are the source of uh, everything from ill health to creativity to healing to insights everything is around that so this is an important one subject because uh, pradeep and uh, ravindra will keep referring to this as we go along in a manifestation these things matter later in the third week when you're talking about health they matter talk about sleep they matter in general our brain waves need to be in a slower state earth has a human frequency there is a frequency for earth that earth frequency is when our body slows down we align to the earth frequency it's called human frequency so the brain waves also have a, a very significant importance and then whenever we are slowing down in our brain waves then we are one with the nature when we are one with the nature we are by default we feel peaceful we feel relaxed we feel composed so meditation is helping us slow down our brain waves so as it automatically we start becoming balanced and relaxed peaceful we become one with the nature we connect with it right we are slow we are not hurrying up we are not worried about things is earth is uh, worried about things i mean do we see any uh, anxiety from earth when we look at the nature nature is peaceful but everything is accomplished isn't it from nature it's like that what when i say everything is accomplished just by morning you wake up there are so many flowers come from a tree right all those things that are planted the rice paddy field suddenly everything will sprout up right so everything happens without even before you realize if you planted a few things you know, in in no time you will see those things uh, sprouting up and then giving you vegetables so it's like that so we slow down then we become one with the nature so we slow down and then when we slow down we have the opportunity to think so it's all about the brain waves difference meditation is fundamentally helping us lower our brain wave patterns all right so we are on the hour so those of you have questions you can stay back to have you can share your experience those of you want to share your experience you can stay back and otherwise tomorrow we will be meeting again at 5:30 pm sharp to listen in to some of the experiences of again some professionals who have been actually practicing meditation and are able to literally literally overcome some kind of an addictions or someone who have been able to really really make the life so passionate and then achieve and manifest so many things in their life so we want to listen in to from two professionals tomorrow and uh, understand how meditation has helped them transform their life and then today how they have been achieving so many things in their life so tomorrow after meditation so let's stay connected back again until then have a great day those of you who have questions stay back for a couple of minutes and then we'll take questions uh, pradeep will take questions from all of us so someone asked a question how to connect to the frequency of 
abundance, Dr. John. Yeah, it's uh, all about this. Once we start uh, lowering the thoughts in our mind, once we empty the mind, what happens? We gradually connect to this uh, quantum field. So once we once we connect to the field, we'll start feeling the whole. Once we start feeling whole, we feel abundance, and uh, feeling is what we feel is what we attract. So the moment we start feeling whole, we'll start attracting all these things related to abundance into our life. It just we we just need to practice meditation regularly. That's it. It happens quite naturally. And uh, one more person was asking how to break the habits. See, uh, as we were discussing some time back, say every every thought or everything what we have learned is a neural connection in our brain. So obviously, the habit is a neural is also a neural connection. It's a kind of strong neural connection. So how do we break that? So once we enter into the state of theta, which is nothing but the subconscious state, so we 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 start putting our attention on the things which we want the most rather than the things which we don't want. So how how do we do that? When we start visualizing about uh, the things what we want, so automatically that neural connections which are associated to the habit starts getting lesser and lesser, and then all these connections will be used to make a new uh, set of neural connections which which. which is obviously the one which we want you yeah, will will discuss uh, this thing in detail in the coming weeks we have an entire week about for this uh, how to reprogram the beliefs and the manifestation so stay tuned for the program anything else guys you can unmute and start interacting so breaking the habits the habit is in the subconscious as a pradeep explained so when we meditate because we are reducing the volume of the thought from our mind from our subconscious because meditation is quieting the mind right so one side it is going to support in reducing that thing which is by default keeps projecting your habit it keeps projecting out readily but because you are meditating regularly you are lowering the thought so it stops projecting as quickly as it used to do say 10 days ago to now so slowly slowly you practice the projection becomes weaker and weaker and weaker because that is not being fed by anybody that's one side But the second side, where he's talking about, is when you start reading up, when you start focusing on things that you want, because that's also will happen. Because thoughts reduce, and there'll only be five percent left over, which are very important for you. If you set a goal for yourself, that's what is there, because what is important for you is where you start focusing on. And when you start focusing on that, and then in meditation, as you start bringing it up, so you are on one side, you are repeating that, so it becomes stronger. On another side, the other thing that is not quite anymore, not being repeated. it becomes weaker and there is some more work in this whole thing called neural gateways neural connections when they form there is a glue that gets formed that glue that gets weakened slowly from things that are not used in the brain use it or lose it concept is there use it or lose it so if you don't use it then it will be going away because that glue that is holding the thoughts uh, the, the old habits slowly it be taken away and then apply it towards a new thing that you are programming yourself to so use it or lose it so you don't use it so slowly it goes down and then cells that wire to the fire to the cells that fire to the wire to the so whatever that you are repeating it becomes stronger and so that's how you slowly break a habit with meditation weakening the old connection strengthening the new ones so that's why reading a book is very important to strengthen your connections and then breaking old habits we got to read books so that you can program your mind with more and more new things and you must do this meditation listen to these talks every day so that you every day you keep on hearing where your attention goes energy flows our thoughts create reality the more times you hear this the more times it goes into and programs and then more of that will weaken the glue from the other side and then so it becomes uh, easy to do away the old habits yeah what is the right time for meditation any time is fine so there is no specific time as such this is meditation is so simple and so easy that you can do it any time anywhere jain hussain how is your meditation today hi sir very good evening ravi sir chandra sir pradeep sir very good evening to everybody actually sir i would like to share my feeling on this meditation uh, i will talk about myself only what i have experienced because it is my third day with buddha ceo working meditation and then on this manifestation program and my 11th day with i1 so personally what i feel is that whenever we start this meditation sir there is a collection of thoughts which certainly impacts your brain like this is what you did wrong this is where you should have done things differently this is where the other person did something wrong with you 
you suddenly start to acknowledge all of those things so in real life what happens that you do not acknowledge and appreciate what is happening around you let's say i'll take for an example yesterday what happened uh, my house is under construction so i yelled at one of my worker so yesterday when i was at this uh, uh, meditation uh, in the evening at 5:30 i certainly started to recall those thoughts i should not have said that thing to that person at least what is happening to me is that at least right now my brain is registering that this is where i did wrong and i should not have done that maybe this small small impact is going to change in me in a way and i'm going to one day you know uh, because why i'm saying this is right now you don't even think of it in the later part or in future that you did something wrong over here right now when you are in this meditation phase your brain is recollecting that thought so this is what has impacted me yesterday and today that uh, things what has happened before whatever i have been to certain persons i should not have done at least my brain has started to re- register nowadays otherwise i could not think of it that whether i did wrong to any person i never acknowledged it so this is what has happened and i think this is going to change me as a person and i would like to look forward to this meditation and manif- manifestation program wonderful meditation is taking us to self awareness state when we become self aware we start observing our emotional patterns or thought patterns or reaction patterns and uh, you are tempted to you remember you recollected what happened in the morning slowly slowly as you practice that time gap becomes lesser and lesser and then you will start being paying attention to that time when it is about to come so that's how we get an opportunity even now itself we got an opportunity to sort of contemplate and then fix it maybe next time but as you go along it's going to be the time gap will come down where you will actually find the catch it before you even say it right so this is where it is going to go very good jain that's i think a great example shri vidya hi masters good evening everyone i was uh, one of the student of five and tech solutions and mainly uh, i need to say uh, like uh, i want to show my gratitude to ravindra sir and thank you ravindra sir for giving this opportunity as also and i was doing meditation from the uh, past 6 uh, to 7 months and when i went to first and when i uh, when i went to pyramid valley uh, like i think it's uh, it's nothing can do anything like that i was thought but after knowing what is meditation uh, what is meditation and what are the medita- benefits of meditation after knowing all the things uh, i so literally believe three magical words ask believe and receive what i ask to universe is i need to get a job before october like that and i believe that and i did um, manifestation and as well as visualization uh, to achieve my target uh, so and i received that uh, and now i am working in a ust global before that only i i got the job and uh, i already joined there and i am now good so uh, if we are if we are asking yeah. anything to the universe means uh, compulsory we will get back if we are, if you are having a belief means so man uh, this meditation helps us a lot in future also for everyone this meditation helps us please try uh, at least 10 to 15 minutes daily we are doing meditation also it's okay and uh, like uh, what to say uh, mind will be peaceful if you are doing meditation also and that's all i want to share my experience wonderful feel that that's nice very good manifestation meditation for manifestation is the mantra Yes, yes, sir. Only three magical words are there, like ask, believe, and receive. Yes. I Very trust good. on those three magical words, and I received right now, and I am good today. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. John uh, Manohraji. So, would you like to share how is uh, your observation? Thank you so much for all your help. Yes, Balsinjanji. Good evening. How are you? friends i think all of you are enjoying the meditation program i think a third day today uh, please open up this is very important we are all waiting to listen from you because based on your feedback you know we will be encouraged to do more for you and guide you properly 
you can put it on your chat box or you can open up and talk don't feel shy because we are all having difficulty in talking in fact i was a very very shy person before and i used to you know not to come into the camera also for a long time and i started opening up and talking more i have i do have a stage fear then i overcome this long back and uh, you have to express yourself because you need not think about what other persons are going to think about you it's not uh, like somebody else is talking you are not going to think about them the same way they are not going to bother about you only thing is by expressing yourself more freely you are only going to be benefited keep this in mind and share as much as possible with us and to your friends also and uh, take the benefit of meditation to everybody it is a great age to learn meditation and you can benefit a lot keep doing meditation any time need not be only when in the evening uh, in the morning also you can do it by yourself thank you all the best to you bindu madam your message before you close today i think i would request everyone to please open up i've been uh, trying to interact with everyone in the group they seem to be very quiet friends this is a wonderful opportunity it's a wonderful program i really want you all to take benefit of this program because i've started here through this program and i've transformed myself so i just want you all and you all are very young your students and this will benefit you you will be the architects for your own life so i really promise that so please please open up just speak up any doubts come back to us we are very friendly you know you can reach us personally talk to us share with us you know we can mentor you coach you in every possible way please make use of this opportunity this is all i want to say wonderful thank you thank you madam for taking time in the middle of your day work day you are uh, here with uh, them for meditation that's wonderful okay have a great uh, day dear folks uh, see you all tomorrow and again then thank you